presentation uh, in this space. I think, uh, as Tim mentioned, we might have found a, a good uh, venue for uh, future presentations and gatherings. So uh, thank you, HCAM, for, uh, for hosting. Um, so I'm Scott Richardson, uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce and uh, head of a local architectural firm. Uh, we thought it was important at this juncture to kind of get some perspective on what the downtown is, uh, since there's some things, quite, quite a few things going on, and uh, be clear on what uh, is allowed by zoning, what some options are for future development, and uh, get other people's perspective and answer any questions that, uh, that might, people might have. So uh, the agenda today is pretty simple. Uh, ben Polico is going to lead off with the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, perspective on downtown. Uh, Tim Kilduff, who was part of a visioning group, uh, which included about four or five people in town to develop kind of a vision for <coughs> Hopkinton moving forward. We'll talk next. Um, Deb Thomas, who's uh, uh, going to give an overview of the Hopkinton Chambers uh, 2020 Committee, which is essentially the de facto economic development arm of the chamber and of the town. Uh, the focus for 2020 is to try and get uh, up to 20% of our tax revenue uh, from commercial and retail entities by the year 2020. We really hover right around 17%, so our focus is trying to attract and retain businesses uh, throughout the town to try to offset the burden on the residential taxpayer. Scott, you can save my five minutes, you just covered it. <laughs> I did? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can, you can elaborate. Uh, and then uh, Elaine Lazarus is gonna do some, uh, an overview of the downtown zoning bylaws uh, and what's uh, allowed and what's not allowed and also some of the parking advantages <coughs> for developing downtown. And then we'll have Q&A. So, uh, thank you again for coming. Uh, ben? Yeah, you're over there. Okay. I believe. All right. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's nice to be here today. I'm Ben Palaco, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen here in town. I'm joined by my colleague, Brian Herr, also a member of the Board of Selectmen for a long time. Uh, I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for having me in today. Uh, and I'm now going to test the limits of their patience because I'm probably going to go long. And at the end of this, I'm actually going to uh, take questions because I have to leave right directly after this for another uh, scheduled event. So uh, I've been on the board of selectmen now for about five and a half years, and um, I will say that my first Memorial Day parade was a sobering experience for many reasons, but uh, one of which was walking up Main Street um, was, uh, was sort of a revelation to me uh, as I looked at it for the first time as an elected official in town. And at that point, if you all remember that far back, what we had was an empty weed-covered lot. We had a kind of a ramshackle building um, with a few businesses that were just sort of getting by in there. And, uh, and we had a restaurant or two. We had a sort of a grocery store type thing that wasn't quite sure what it was at that point. Um, and, uh, and downtown really felt like it was struggling. And in fact, I remember talking about this with my selectman colleagues as we walked up the street about what the situation was and, and how we needed to do something. And what we were very concerned about at that point was the town evolving as sort of a, what we were calling a barbell, where all the development would happen on the periphery, everyone would sort of go there, and downtown would become this kind of fallow desert you just drive through to get to something else. Uh, it was an issue of grave concern. For that reason, most of my tenure on the Board of Selectmen, I have in one way or another been focused on uh, activities and events and, and things related to the downtown and how, to, and how to improve and how to avoid that outcome. Because downtown, I think to this town in particular, is a critical resource. Uh, it is absolutely the central uh, artery through town, right? All the, both major roads through town go through downtown. Um, it is uh, clearly emotionally, I think, where, where people think of as the place they want to be. Um, uh, we have the town common, we have all these other um, places that, uh, that people sort of have this atta attraction to. Um, and yet, it was, it was this dramatically underutilized resource. The first thing, though, that when we think about downtown is realizing what we can be and what we can't be. And the geography of downtown has been, by and large, determined already. Uh, as you all know, on the north side, we have some small retail setups, um, some buildings that are, that are chopped up into small retail spaces. On the south side, it's, it's a little more broken up, right? It's, it's, it's uh, some buildings that are used for private non-retail purposes. There's some small service type operations. Um, there's a, a very small library. Um, but there isn't, there hasn't been, there isn't a lot of, uh, of sort of room. There's no clean sheet of paper here for us to build off of. We have to start with where we are. Um, 
uh, the, there is really no way downtown to create a Wellesley or a Concord type uh, situation um, without another great fire, which I think we all agree would be undesirable. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we have to sort of work with what we have. Um, what seems to be evolving, however, over the last five and a half years, and in a lot of different ways, is is the town is is turning into a place where people. I, I think this is going to work out. Go to the periphery to buy things, right? So they'll they'll go to um, to the, to the Price Chopper Plaza or to Westboro or to Holliston to to make their major purchases. But what they will do is come downtown for the experiences. And so Price Chopper may be, a, may be a perfectly fine place to get your groceries and, and do a couple other errands, but downtown has, can offer you all these other things you can actually do, right? So you can go to uh, ideally a library, you can go to the Common, you can go to some of these restaurants that are evolving. And so, and so this idea of the, town is the, the downtown is the experiential center of town fits well with what we have um, and, uh, and also sets the priorities for for what we think about as, as government officials. So what are the things we, we think we need to do here? Um, first of all, downtown, one of the key elements has been support for the anchor stores. Um, I will say that one of the reasons I've been involved in the library project, again, since I was first elected, is because I view the library as absolutely the anchor store of the downtown. It's in a central location. It appeals to all ages. It has a wide range of service of, of offerings. Uh, it is a place that can actually bring people to the center of town of all different types and give them something to do. That has ancillary benefits for all the other businesses downtown. Once you come there and you park, and we'll talk about parking in a little bit, um, uh, you can certainly go ideally to a number of different uh, act, pursue a number of different activities. The second thing that really matters uh, from our perspective is building out the infrastructure of the downtown. Um, uh, it has to be some place that's useful and attractive so people want to go there. We, one of the things we've been working on also for almost five years now is the downtown corridor project of the state, and that's reached now the 25% approval level. And what this will do is give us um, uh, several hundred thousand dollars of money to pursue a, a broad ranging plan to, to essentially beautify the downtown. That means fixing the sidewalks. That means putting in benches and other uh, elements. That means fi making the roadway um, uh, easier for people to get through and maybe narrowing it down to make it easier for pedestrians to cross over. Uh, it means ideally putting underground utilities in. Um, that is uh, quite an expensive offering. We've talked about in the past, we've not pursued it. But again, if you believe that downtown it needs to be something that people want to go to, one of the best ways to do it is to get all the stuff that nowadays clutters your view, probably to the point that people don't even realize, to take that and put it underground. So you can actually <coughs> go through a downtown area in, a, in, a easy, in, in an easier fashion and, um, and not see all this stuff hanging out. Third thing um, we need to do on the government side is, uh, is encourage and support the businesses that fit with this experiential model. Uh, that means restaurants. We have, we have developed quite a, a terrific restaurant offering downtown and there's more to come. Um, I will say to you, I don't know if the guy, the person who owns Yogurt Beach is here today, but that has been the most terrific addition of downtown far, f with benefits far better than I would have ever expected. Um, one of the great joys for me as an elected official was going downtown this summer it's six o'clock or seven o'clock in the evening and having it be packed <laughs> with, with families, kids, people sitting in those chairs you put on the sidewalk. It was terrific. Um, that's <coughs> the kind of experiences I think we all want to have downtown. I think enjoying those kind of things is what pre brings people to downtown. Yogurt Beach has, has punched far above its weight so far in terms of what it's done for the community. But we've also got, obviously, the Gorm's been there forever. You've got Bittersweet, you've got the Thai restaurant, Vinnie's, uh, you know, Bill's, of course, is being the mainstay, the restaurant that's going to come next year. We're going to have a terrific set of ref restaurants, I think, that, that, uh, that people will like, will offer variety, and will, it will, again, will continue to attract people and families downtown. And then the final element here is, is really what I guess I would call specialty, this isn't quite the right word, but specialty retail. Little shops that, um, that uh, maybe are high value or that people can go to, um, again, before, during, after, after they eat. So Swoon's down there now. Um, I've not been in the store. It obviously doesn't appeal to my demographic. But, um, but uh, you know, it seems to be doing quite well, and I think, I think it's going to be benefited by the further development on that block. Um, we have a lot of other uh, little shops in town. Um, I think over time, ideally, those will, those will continue to evolve um, to, to so something like that model. And, um, and I think uh, uh, that's something that, from a, from a nudging perspective, we'd all be benefited by, um, 
by doing is, is helping those, those owners of those buildings move to that model. And then the fourth thing, and this, is, this came into play recently, is uh, we need to avoid um, uh, killers. Uh, the biggest killer of downtowns is, is vacancies. Big, vacant buildings um, uh, have, have an outsized impact on, on creating the feeling of a, uh, of a dying downtown, right? I mean, we all remember that when that lot was vacant, it definitely cast a pall over how you felt when you drove through downtown. And I mean, we all remember too, for a while it was a big hole. That was even worse. Um, uh, this is the broken windows equivalent of, in my theory, of real estate development. Uh, it, it, big buildings have to be occupied um, and uh, almost whatever the cost. And so you have to um, uh, be very careful to make sure you, you don't cause that to happen either advertently or uh, unintentionally. Um, uh, say what you will about CVS, um, and I've, I'm trying to avoid that topic to some extent, but, but it is a strong retailer that will be in town for a long time. It will attract people here to buy things. Um, it, is, uh, it is occupying probably the largest piece of real estate in the downtown area, and it's going to be here for a, long, for a while. So that is in and of itself a benefit. Uh, hop drug being is, some, is in a similar situation. In fact, it's probably a little more, even more important in my perspective because it's across the street. And so it really starts to set the tone for that downtown area. So uh, we do need to make sure we keep that, those two businesses strong, vibrant, and, uh, and occupied most importantly. And so what's my vision of the downtown? Uh, it's in a few years you'll be able to do the following. You'll drive into downtown, you'll park, again we'll come back to that, you'll go to the library, you'll have dinner in one of the restaurants, you'll browse some of the shops, you'll walk to the common, you'll admire the brand new fountain, and then you'll go to the HCA and catch a play. I think that would be a terrific opportunity for people. It's not something you do every week, but, um, but some of you will do it every week and uh, uh, it'll, it'll improve the lifestyle in downtown, it'll keep it vibrant, and, um, and I think it truly offers a unique opportunity in Hopkinton. So this brings to the what does the town need from all of you as business owners and people interested in the downtown. Uh, a short but important list. First of all, again, the library is critical. I've said it for years. I'll continue to say it until it's in the ground. Um, that, is, that is absolutely the key structure of downtown. It's currently making its way through the planning board. It needs to get through the planning board in a timely fashion. We are, uh, we're already starting to, to have to talk about pushing back the timeline for building that building because it's been being, uh, moving more slowly through the approval process. Um, I encourage all of you to encourage, uh, uh, to, to show your support for this process, to vocally um, uh, uh, pitch in, um, to talk about how important it is to people, and again, to attend these meetings and make sure that we, we get this done in the, in the way we need to. Um, uh, we cannot afford to have delays with the library project. Second thing is the downtown corridor project has laid low for the last year or two. Uh, it's going to become more visible again, and, uh, and it is going to need support. Um, it's not perfect. It's also not final. Um, but this is a case where we need to emphasize what works about it. Uh, we need to refine it to make it even better than it is today. But, but we cannot afford to let that project um, uh, get derailed, um, get hung up. Um, it needs to move forward because, again, it's going to help set the infrastructure for downtown properly. Third thing you all need to do is, uh, in, uh, is you need to and we need to encourage other business owners to interact with Town Hall more proactively. Um, uh, we, if we believe that this is the vision of what the town town should look like, there's things that, that the town can do to help. Um, and if, uh, and the largest issue we have is that we have essentially no interaction with businesses in, in town hall. Um, we, we frequently don't know what's going on before anyone else does. Uh, we, that, that limits our ability to shape things, to nudge things, to, to do what we can to make uh, a business more economically viable. And I think if the businesses want to come to town and they, they fit this, this vision that I propose, um, I think the town would be very amenable to trying to find a way to work with them however we can to help make sure the economics work out. So uh, I'd encourage all of you to make sure that we, we, we have this open interaction and we, we look for ways to make these solutions mutually acceptable. And the last thing I'm going to talk about, and I've, I've hinted about it twice so far, is parking. Um, uh, you know, if I've spent five and a half years worried about downtown, I feel like I've spent most of that word sometimes worried about parking. Um, uh, parking is a good problem. Parking means you have so much demand for all the stuff downtown that people want to go to that they have to. That it's a it's a it's a challenge. The biggest challenge they face is getting there and being able to get to those things. Uh, I like that. That means there's a lot of demand. Um, 
uh, there are solutions to parking. Um, they are going to, uh, they are going to require money. Um, they are going to uh, take some time to put in place. Um, but the simple fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, if you have things people want to go to, they will go to them, even if they have to park at the town common, even if they have to park at the church, even if they have to park down at the old Kalala's lot. Um, people will come. Uh, we can make the parking situation better, but what we can't do is hold up progress or, or let that become a, what we, a self-limiting feature of how the downtown evolves. We should, we should move full speed ahead on, on getting all these activities in place, putting all these, these th wheels in motion that can make the downtown even better. Parking will come um, when people see the need for it, when people feel, feel that it that's a critical issue. I'm confident the town will support it. They always have. <clears throat> they just need to have the argument made properly, and, um, uh, and I'm quite sure they will again. So parking will get there. So my summary, downtown, um, uh, just in the te my tenure on the board has been is doing much better than I think it was when it started. Um, it's very much on the upswing. There's a lot to be done, but we've made great progress. And um, uh, I think the key at this point is just to keep moving forward and make this vision a reality. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Okay. And you, as you said, you had to leave. Yeah. Just, yeah. Engagement. So just are there any, any questions? Any questions, real quick, before I go? Uh, so. Dave, uh, they'd like you to stand up to the microphone, so <coughs> you okay. are recorded for all time. <coughs> I have to say my name and my address. And I'm not wise mental. So um, the downtown quarter, uh, I was involved in a um, update meeting, I don't know, a year and a half ago, two years yeah. ago. At that time, uh, it was clear to me that the deadline, the application deadline was looming. And as we sit here today, I believe that would have passed. So my three questions are, what's the status of the downtown quarter project mm -hmm. with respect to receiving or applying for grant money? Who owns it uh, from the town? What town body is responsible for making that application? And then how can we help? Right, great. So the Board of Selectmen own it. Um, it's an application made by the town. The, the application was submitted, I don't remember exactly now, let's say a couple years ago, to the state. It's a state-funded program. Um, the target deadline, the target for getting the money is 2017, roughly, maybe maybe even 2018. Um, and the way you do it is you do it in, in steps. So we made an initial 25% submission, which which in broad scope outlined the project, what we wanted to accomplish. Not a lot of detail. Um, that went to the state. It's now coming back to the town. The town now needs to do um, a further set of revisions to make another resubmission to the state. This is much more detailed. So this is when we really start to, um, when we'll revisit what we looked at before and when we'll refine it and again we'll start to put in some, many more of those details. Then that will go back to the state um, and then as another submission. And, and it will continue to work through the process. And again, there'll be more opportunities for interaction along the way. So, um, so it takes a while. This is a, this is a four or five year journey to get this money, um, but it is a substantial sum of money. I think what we need from the town's perspective is um, uh, engagement, first of all. People need to look at this. People need to say what they like and what they don't like. We also need um, to accept the fact that, that while there may be details that people may or may not like, as a as an overarching plan, it's important to the community, and so it needs to move forward, right? So, so where we've had things sometimes go awry is um, uh, people hang up on one detail or another, and the process bogs down. Um, uh, I'd like to see that not happen with this project. So, what what I'd really like to do is have people early and often get involved, comment on this, help us make it something we like better, and then and then. Uh, speak up for it, come to town meeting and talk about it, vote for it, uh, just all those things that um, just help keep the process moving forward. And the and next step would be? The next, uh, go ahead. Uh, the next step again is we are, uh, we're working on refining the, the new the plan. We're actually going to have a, a group that's, gonna, that's going to um, be put together to do, um, to do more work on it. And, um, uh, and I don't actually know the resubmission deadline off the top of my head, but it's, but it's, it's, it's moving along. And just as an, aside, <coughs> as an adjunct to that, uh, the chamber is planning a an open forum uh, presentation within the next couple months uh, for Dave Del Torre to give us an update on where the project is <coughs> and what the timeline is. So stay tuned for uh, that invitation. Any other questions for Ben? Okay, thank you all very much. Thank it's been nice to come in here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
Uh, next we'll have uh, Tim Kilduff uh, talk about the vision group uh, that uh, he was involved with and what their findings were and what their uh, focus is for what Hopkinton could be. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. <coughs> the uh, selectmen, uh, in collaboration with the planning board uh, last year, uh, decided that, uh, that they would, they would to collaborate and um, appoint a group of citizens to, to begin to think about a, a long-term vision for, uh, for the community. Um, I got to tell you, there, it, it, when, once you get into this, uh, uh, let me just uh, issue a disclaimer. Uh, I've lived in town for 30 plus years. Uh, I'm a, I uh, happen to like it here. I love the community. I'm a, I'm a supporter uh, and a booster of the community. But we had to, uh, and, and if there's anybody that cares more about Hopkinton than I, than I do, uh, I'm a pretty close second. But one of the challenges uh, as we started this work was to step back from that. Uh, and it, what, we spent a lot of time on, on that. Uh, the, the makeup of the, of the committee was uh, pretty interesting. Somebody put some good thought into this. Uh, there's no one here that has any opinions. You can, you can see the first name, John Catino. Um, uh, Kristen is, uh, is an educator, lives in town. Uh, Peter Ogoy is here. Um, strong opinions about a lot of things. Uh, Mavis O'Leary has been uh, very, very engaged uh, from day one on the whole Legacy uh, Farms uh, initiative. Um, Tom Terry, uh, born and raised here. Strong opinions. Deb Thomas was on the planning board at that point. Uh, so both the planning board and the board of selectmen were involved. The town hall professionals were invaluable, uh, and the community engaged uh, a, a, a group of uh, consultants uh, that helped us frame um, this whole process. What we tried to do was to literally step back. We spent a lot of time talking about not talking about, talking about not talking about individual projects. It was very easy for all of us uh, to be opinionated about um, the intersection in downtown, um, uh, increased athletic fields, whatever it was, we really worked hard at, uh, at putting that aside. Uh, and I, I, we, we achieved that, but it took, it took some work. Um, and, and you can see very, very quickly, uh, this is what really we tried to focus on. We wanted to create a platform. We wanted to, uh, we wanted to provide, uh, pro provide a guide for the, the master plan. The planning board is knee deep in that at this point a critical document uh, in the community in terms of its development. Uh, and that's where our focus was. We wanted to create an overriding vision, uh, vision but we, we pretty quickly understood that it was easy to do, and you'll see the three statements. That was, that was easy. But what about vision statements based on our history, values, creativity in the community, uh, vision themes? That became uh, more of a challenge. Uh, and again, we had to resist getting into specific, uh, specific projects. The first uh, part of, the, of the, the vision that was created really focused on location. It's tough to argue with this. Hopkinton is a vibrant, welcoming community. Welcoming, cr critical word. We talked a lot about that. Uh, centrally located in New England. I don't think we give, our, give ourselves enough credit, nor do we quite understand what that means, but it is. Um, uh, and 26.2, pretty cute, 26.2 miles west of Boston. Um, but that's a, a, a geographical touch point. Uh, we could spend the next hour talking about our connection to the, our connection to the marathon. Community assets. This was tough to stay, again, to stay out of because uh, if someone who's lived in the community for a while, there are those in the room who will tell you that 20 years ago, the, the, the planning process um, was not nearly as strong as it is now. Um, it was driven by um, a small group of people, I would argue. Um, and it was, there, was, there was not much balance. Um, if you step back and try to be a little somewhat objective, again, per, put your pers personal thoughts aside, this is a, a well-balanced community, and it's in part that because of some of the, some of the people in the room, in uh, the elected officials, it really does have a balance. 
Um, and that's going to be the challenge going forward. How do you how do you maintain that balance? How do you how do you balance uh, attitudes and uh, and wishes and expectations of people, and keep that balance? Uh, this well-educated. That you don't need me to tell you that one of the things that's made Hopkinton what Hopkinton is at the moment is the quality of the uh, of the schools. Um, that quality is going to put more that the, the demand to keeping that quality where it is is going to put more demands on the on the community and you'll all have decisions around that to make at the special town meeting coming up in October and then finally attitude if I were the Pope I would take this very slowly uh, in, 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 in and we are respectful of our past, clearly, clearly obvious over the last few months with the work of the Friends of the 300th and the 300th Anniversary Committee. They brought that out. Um, I, I've heard more and more stories. I wasn't here for the fireworks. I've heard more and more uh, people talk about how proud they were to be there that night. Uh, th that really brought a real focus to this community in terms of respect. Uh, engaged in the present, you can't argue that. Uh, that's absolutely true. And actively preparing for the future. You just heard the chairman of the Board of Selectmen be as clear as I've, I've heard them about this downtown process. And I think uh, the five people that sit on their board uh, are, are clearly engaged in that at this point. Uh, we need to do personal note. We need to do all we can to support the kind of work that they're doing. Then we, we, we talked about this overriding vision, this vibrant community, uh, the, the endowment of, of, the, of the, the assets in the community, and open space is important to us, natural resources, facilities, programs that comport, uh, com, uh, uh, promote well-educated community. That all makes sense, doesn't it? But the most important part of this vision work, uh, and I've got copies of this to, to hand out, were around the issues of themes uh, in, uh, and also specific activities and direction. Let me give you one about, uh, see if I can find this really quickly. Uh, actively build consensus for citizen-focused, well-managed, fiscally, uh, fiscally sound, open and fair town government. It's wide open, uh, but that's absolutely critical. The, the, uh, the, the challenges that this community faces around uh, the fiscal issues are going to be enormous. Uh, it's going to take debate. It's going to take uh, uh, patience uh, in the community. But the fiscal responsibility that's been, t that's been uh, led by the elected officials in this town the last few years is what's made Hopkinton one of the best communities in Metro West to live in. And oh, by the, by the way, I don't think we can ignore the fact that if you, if you talk to people outside this particular region, when they talk about Metro West, this is the hottest community in Metro West. This is not my standard. We've known it for a long time, but people on the outside are beginning to realize that. So I will leave a copies of, the, of the, uh, both the themes uh, and some of these suggestions uh, with you to take with you. But as we move forward, um, in the planning process and the master plan is going on at this point, I would suggest that you use this as a, as a template um, and with the realization that uh, there was a, a group of people who looked at all kinds of reports that are done on this town. It goes back, uh, I asked Eric Sonnet, who was involved in Voices for Vision, when Voices for Vision took place, and it was somewhere around 2003. Uh, at that point, there were a set of priorities that were agreed to by 100 plus people that went through a very elaborate process. Uh, the first priority was schools, and the second was a vibrant downtown. So we'll leave you with that thought, uh, in, uh, with the hope that uh, the elected leaders in the community will proceed on the path that they're proceeding on, particularly as it relates to downtown, and also that uh, we all help them to maintain the balance and the quality in this community. Thanks, Tim. Any, any questions for Tim? Can I move it in that direction? Okay. 
next, uh, we want to have Deb just uh, give us an update on 2020. Great. Thanks, Scott. And anything that I hadn't said already, you can say. <laughs> no, that's good. good morning. Just wanted to take a couple minutes and make people aware, if they're not, of a committee that was formed back in 2011 by the Board of Selectmen to support and guide the town uh, to promote economic development. So it's the 2020 committee, and as Scott alluded to, the primary goal of the 2020 committee is to increase the town's commercial revenue. We currently have commercial revenue in the range of about 17%, and the goal of the Board of Selectmen is to get that up to 20% by the year 2020. A little cute and catchy, aren't we? So in order to achieve this, the committee focuses on a few things. We want to foster a business-friendly community, which I had spent five years on the planning board, and that's something that um, one of the goals for myself on the planning board was to do that. And you know, it's not always easy because you have a lot of um, conflicting opinions, but that is something that has been a goal of mine to continue to be business friendly in the community. We also um, outreach to existing businesses to gauge a competitive environment and retain and grow our established base. In addition to that, we want to identify businesses and segments that may wish to establish or relocate here and try to make it attractive for them to relocate here. So one thing that we've observed is some other towns have regular meetings with the town planners and the manager to discuss ongoing projects. Ben alluded to this in his discussion about you know trying to stay ahead and make the, make sure that the the folks either on the planning board who clearly are aware of what's happening, Elaine knows quite well, and maybe get the the economic development committee and the 2020 committee to have monthly meetings with Elaine and her team so that we're aware of who is looking into coming to town so that we can be proactive and engage with them up front and see how the chamber may be able to assist them in their process and break down any barriers that may exist. So that's, you know, that's the role that, that the 2020 committee plays and just wanted to take a minute and make people aware of that committee. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. And uh, again, actually, we did a little uh, test uh, meeting this past uh, week, uh, Wednesday morning, uh, with Elaine and the building department uh, and Ken Weismantle uh, and about four or five members of our committee to see uh, are they open to having this meeting. Uh, we, review, we went through and reviewed the uh, list of uh, applicants that are in front of the planning board, uh, current building permits. And we basically have, uh, as Deb alluded to, a look at making this a monthly meeting so that the 2020 committee can really be up to date on what is uh, coming up in planning and zoning uh, and approvals and how we might be able to do some outreach to these businesses. So we are underway with that effort. And uh, next is uh, Elaine Lazarus, our town planner, uh, to review uh, what the zoning uh, is for downtown and has been and could be. Well, no, that'd be down the road, but uh, and uh, kind of a bylaws overview. Now, right next to Brian Hur, there are some uh, copies of the downtown uh, zoning district uh, requirements, uh, as well as kind of a, uh, a map of what encompasses the downtown zoning area. So maybe you want to run those back around uh, yeah. if people want them. Elaine. Okay, thank you for having me. I'm Elaine Lazarus, the Director of Land Use Planning and Permitting. And just following up on that meeting we had this week, I think it's a two-way street because um, sometimes people will come into my office and look about uh, locating a business there, and I think we need to work together on how to, how to work with people on, on both ends of the spectrum. So we've heard a lot about vision, and one of the ways that we um, implement the vision is to, um, to put some of that into zoning. And so uh, for the downtown uh, area, we have a central uh, downtown business district. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, maybe seven or eight years ago, the town decided to separate out the downtown business district from its generic business district. So it was able to target um, specific requirements that look to fostering and maintaining that downtown feel. Um, a lot of the town zoning was done in the starting in the um, 50s and 60s, and at that time, the the strip mall um, with ample parking was the way to go in the suburbs. But there were these little downtowns that that didn't really fit into. So over time, and one thing we learned in the master plans was that people really care about the downtown, as we've heard about, 
And in order to facilitate a lot of things that people care about keeping in downtown, we need to um, have specific zoning that's geared to downtown. So um, back in 2007, uh, the town created a separate district just for the downtown business area. And it's surrounded by residential neighborhoods, which also have, they're residentially zoned, but they've got the small lots too. And for an, a viable downtown, you need both the residences and the businesses. So they work together. Um, it's, it's a nice compact area in the center of town. And within that district, um, there's about 80 parcels, uh, commercially zoned parcels, uh, only two of which are vacant and many of which were created well before the town had zoning. So the lot sizes are typically small. Um, obviously, nobody had cars back then. People didn't need parking lots. And so they were really created at a time when, um, you know, I've seen the pictures of the hitching posts and things like that. I mean, the, the way downtowns were created in those days was quite different than the way we create commercial today. So in working with that and keeping that feel, um, we tried to craft a downtown district that recognizes that. So it does have a smaller lot size. It's got a 15,000 square foot lot size. Uh, there was an attempt, um, I think it was last year, to reduce that. Uh, it didn't pass a town meeting, but that's one of the ways that you know, could bring the uh, downtown lots more into a conforming nature and make it um, easier to redevelop, to uh, revitalize those properties. There's no frontage requirement, another recognition that um, you don't need, really need a lot of frontage in a downtown district. And the building height uh, maximum is 35 feet. Um, and so some of the uses that are allowed uh, in downtown are uh, by right of bed and breakfast establishments, which uh, we don't have any at this point, retail stores, offices, uh, medical office, banks, the kinds of things one typically sees <coughs> in a downtown, restaurants. And then there are additional uses by special permit that um, are those that need additional scrutiny, perhaps because it's traffic impact, um, such as uh, gas stations, car washes, theaters, and, and things like that. And I think, you know, in maintaining the downtown, we need to look and make sure that's the right mix of uses if we want to bring activity, uh, farmers markets, you know, those kinds of things to downtown. We need to be vigilant that we're allowing the types of things that people will come downtown for, for those experiences. Um, so some of the differences um, that we have in downtown uh, regard to parking. Um, the most towns, when they created zoning in the early years uh, in, in the suburbs, created parking based on as if you were building a big plaza with, with a big lot. And it didn't really recognize on-street parking. So in the downtown, it's the only place in town where we do have on-street parking that people can share and people can use and park one place and walk to multiple businesses. So the requirements for parking in downtown are half what they are elsewhere in town. Uh, basically, just to recognize that people are going to or should be parking once and, and walking. It's a compact downtown, it's a small area, and it's definitely walkable, at least most months of the year. Um, the other um, thing we have is that in the downtown uh, along Main Street, you can't have parking between the street, uh, between Main Street and the principal building on the lot. And uh, in order to foster buildings at the street, that setback requirement from the front is only five feet. So buildings that are to be pushed to the front, the parkings to the side and the rear, to avoid that kind of a strip development that could come over time if buildings are knocked down and, and rebuilt. So to try to foster that downtown appearance and feel, uh, reducing the parking requirements, we allow shared parking, off-site parking, um, and basically the, the walkability with the buildings at the street. And those are the differences that we have downtown. We also have the historic district, which uh, covers some of the residential and commercial properties. And that um, is it allows the town to preserve its history as it modernizes and goes forward, but is mindful of that past and respectful of that past. Um, another of the, uh, there was a past attempt uh, to regulate dumpsters, which didn't pass, but that was another thing that was kind of geared toward downtown and people living in close proximity to commercial activities. So something that possibly could be visited in the past. Um, the approval process for changes downtown, tried to streamline that over the years. Um, it used to be that facade changes had to go before the planning board, now they don't. Um, if you're not adding onto a building, um, you're not adding new space, you don't need uh, planning board review for that. 
um, and additions of under 5,000 square feet need a minor project review by the planning board. Uh, over 5,000 is a major project review. The difference is one requires a hearing and one doesn't. Uh, the minor project review is a lot easier. Uh, the same with parking lots, under 25 spaces, it's a minor review, and over 25, it's a major review. And I think that the major difference there is that the stormwater impacts uh, get reviewed during the major project. So uh, the master plan surveys consistently show that people want to maintain the downtown. And um, there's a, as I see in the discussions at board meetings and at town meeting, one thing I've noticed is that when people move to Hopkinton or any community in a suburban environment, there's a automobile-oriented lifestyle. And part of the challenge that we face in talking about zoning changes and proposing zoning is that um, sometimes a downtown is not compatible with that auto automobile-oriented lifestyle. There's this really push and this challenge between uh, serving people who want to drive everywhere in their car and having a place where people need to walk. And so I think that's the challenge in dealing with downtown going forward and working on zoning changes is really getting people to recognize the difference and to the extent we can do that in zoning and with other programs and uh, parking facilities to encourage people to leave the car in one place and walk and um, recognizing the on-street parking and other things in, in downtown I think going forward. Okay. Questions? Uh, I just yeah. wanted to put the Zoning yeah. Advisory yeah. Committee is having a public forum yeah. on Tuesday night uh, soliciting changes uh, for zoning. So again, just to elaborate on that, and Sam Perez probably has some questions. Uh, again, the public forum is open to uh, anybody to uh, come forward and request uh, zoning change, zoning amendment, uh, or discuss some ideas they might have uh, for zoning either that might involve their own property or other properties in town. So uh, uh, look forward to, again, getting feedback, and that forms the basis for the agenda for the Zoning Advisory Committee to uh, review and advise and recommend uh, zoning changes to the Planning Board, who then ultimately <coughs> propose those changes or not uh, to town meeting. Brian. Could you just walk us through what's involved in the zoning change? And can a citizen petition just go straight to town meeting floor? Or does it have to go through Zach? I'm not clear on that, and I think that there's some discussion mm -hmm. about that right now. Yeah, there are several avenues to get to town meeting, uh, one of which is a citizen petition or a landowner petition. So the state statute provides that the planning board, the board of selectmen, board of appeals can submit zoning articles to town meeting, but also citizens with a 10 signatures can submit directly into the warrant, and also a landowner without any other signatures, they can submit an article to rezone their property. So in Hopkinton, what we've tried to do is to channel those through the Zoning Advisory Committee, which is advisory, but it allows people a forum to discuss with a, a wide-ranging group of people who have lots of diverse opinions on maybe how that, um, that idea could be improved, uh, talk about it, maybe something else is going on, you could combine it with something else. Um, so it's not required that anyone go through Zach. Someone can go right to town meeting, but the planning board is required in all cases to hold a public hearing on every zoning change and make a recommendation. So no matter how it gets to the warrant, the planning board still has to have a hearing and make a recommendation. And it prefers to get a recommendation from the Zoning Advisory Committee first, which is a big group, it's diverse, it's a wide-ranging kind of free-for-all discussion, and um, they really appreciate that input into the process because those people don't always show up at the, at the hearings either. Well, I think so. that's the piece that may not be clearly understood is mm -hmm. if the planning board by law has to have a public hearing on every article, whether the citizens submit it directly or not, that's the piece I think that people don't understand. Yeah, that's required. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions for Elaine or others? How long does that usually take to, um, to submit? And like, I, I, there's a town meeting coming up in well, they, they need to submit the petition while the warrant is open. So it's open now, so people can submit a hearing. The problem we uh, typically have is that the planning board has to have a public hearing, and that needs to be advertised two weeks in advance. So I've uh, informed uh, we do have a potential petitioner, and I've told them that in order to get to the planning board before town meeting, we really have to have it in by Monday. Um, if it doesn't come in by then and we can't advertise it, then even if it's on the warrant, it can't be voted because the planning board won't be able to have a hearing and, and, and make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. so. 
And just to review, I, I'm, I happen to sit on the Zoning Advisory Committee uh, as well uh, as others here. And uh, so the process we see is from September through sometimes into January, we'll have meetings every couple weeks to review and vet uh, those applications. They move on to uh, planning board for the hearing uh, and further comment. And then uh, again, typically most zoning changes have always been reviewed at annual town meeting, uh, but I guess some have been at special town meeting. So it's a process. Yeah. Other questions? Can't see all the way back, so. Can you guys step up to the mic? Can they step up to the mic? Okay, yes. Question, so questions going forward, you're gonna have to step up to the mic. Uh, cover everything? Great. Uh, well again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Elaine, for, for that overview. Um, and again, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we are trying to, and I think it's something that's on everyone's mind, is what is, what is the status of the Main Street corridor uh, improvements? Uh, so the Chamber will be putting together a form, potentially even here, uh, over the next uh, probably some time in November to have that presented, and we'll get an update and uh, get some feedback on that. So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, plenty of coffee and, uh, and eats, so help yourself.